As a professional marketing writer, your ability to succeed is going to depend on whether or not you are malleable, whether or not you are adaptable, whether or not you can write for different kinds of brands in different brand voices. So the series of videos that I have around brand voice are meant to train you on the top six most common types of brand voices. And the one I want to cover today is a, a unique one. It's deceptively difficult, and it's about writing for everyday brands. So when I say everyday brands, I mean brands that people encounter on a daily basis, brands that sell things that support everyday lifestyle. So these are not once in a while purchases like a vehicle or an airplane ticket. These are brands that sell things that people use every day, like a mop or a bag of chips, <laughs> okay? Your ability to sell these kind of common items through convincing copy is actually very unique because these tend to be either really big established brands. So think like Johnson and Johnson or Nike or brands that you, you know, see everywhere in the marketplace that have kind of become part of the human experience, right? Um, or they're startups that are trying to sell something common, which is really hard to do because to make space and to create visibility in a very, very crowded, saturated commercial market can be a heavy lift. As a skilled copywriter, your ability to create unique and interesting stories and ideas and taglines and emails could be a huge differentiator and a huge asset for a brand. So if you can master this, if you can get really, really good at taking something that we all have in common but making it special or making it unique or putting a spin on it that compels people to react, you will have really landed on a valuable trait as a copywriter. Okay, so that's kind of the argument for like, why try, right? Why, why try to go after something normal, typical every day, right? Because it's very, very useful to people, first of all, and because it can be make you a very valuable writer in the world. I'm Joy Yule. I run Hire a Writer, a copywriting agency, and my writers and I work very hard to create world-class copywriting. We're not interested in just doing stuff like everybody else does it, right? We don't want to just create Googleable content. We want to create something different, something unique. So even as you write for everyday brands, I do think that you have the ability and the potential to do that. So let's unpack this little lesson on writing for everyday brands. In my company, we've actually created some archetypes around these brand voices because it's helpful to think of brands as people. Brands aren't people, right? Companies aren't people. That's a big conversation in the world. But they are, they do have traits that help you understand how to communicate in a human way, right? So this is going to commonly be a B to C play. So everyday brands are often going direct to consumer, although there absolutely are B2B versions of these. But you're going to be thinking about the things people drink every day, the things people eat every day, the showers people take, the normal clothes we buy, right? I did mention in the beginning that we're not really talking about big purchases simply because if you're watching this video, you're probably not a writer for Pepsi, <laughs> although you might be, or you might be aiming to be, in which case the skills I'm going to delineate are still useful to you, even though um, we're trying to think more of that mid-range, mid-socioeconomic level from a demographic perspective. Most of what I'm going to focus on now isn't has nothing to do with demographics, right? We're not really talking about brands as people in the sense that they need to relate directly to the consumer based on certain, you know, lifestyle components. We're talking about psychographics. And the psychographics really have to do with description. So what is the voice of Mia, which is the, the name of the archetype that we use to talk about everyday brands, to learn how to write like an everyday brand? Mia is pragmatic, practical. She's concise. So these are not the kind of brands where you want to wax eloquent. Go to Anne. If you want to look at the Anne video on nat how to write for natural brands, that's where you get into the eloquent and the hyper adjectives and all that, right? Hyperbole and all the superlatives. Here you want to be concise, but you also want to be clever. So some of the most familiar ads that you've probably ever seen would fall into this category, would be those that are done to appeal to the everyday consumer with a product that they could use every day. You want to be clever and you want to be absolute. So this is the idea with everyday brands that you really, really have to keep in mind from a marketing perspective is that you're talking to as many people as possible. So this is to the masses, 
which means you're not going after the smallest viable audience. You're going after the biggest possible audience. The addressable market for most of these products is vast, meaning probably global, probably in the billions, right, of people. Um, the average kind of value per item tends to be pretty low in that it's something people would transact frequently. So there are a lot of um, kind of trade-based or market-based dynamics that it would be worthwhile for you to dig into as you think about the right kind of copy to create for brands like this. So that's a little bit about the voice. Let's now look at some images that evoke that every day, right? So think about routines. Think about habits. Think about stuff people spend their time doing and then stuff that people like to spend their time doing. So we're running through an airport after our kid. We're getting our morning coffee. We're going for a run. We're hanging out with friends, right? So it's kind of taking all of those very, very familiar things that mean we're human and figuring out how you can intercept and use those stories and use language in a meaningful way. As we have done our brand voice and tone research, we have always tie them back to a couple of categories because it's helpful to have reference points. As a writer, if you're building a repertoire of brand voices that you can easily kind of shape shift in and out of and you wanna write for everyday brands, this would be a literary reference that would be worth kind of looking into. Toni Morrison. The quote is we die, that may be the meaning of life, but we do language and that may be the measure of our lives. Writers who can write very, very skillfully for these kinds of brands are able to take something that is so common in the human experience, changing a diaper, and make it something magical. Make it that moment of connection with an infant. Make it that memorable moment that gets put in the baby book, right? As a writer, you need to begin to see past the commonness of these the daily run, the picking up the coffee, and figure out how to beautify it. Think of how to put a unique spin on it. Think of the kind of perspective that's going to touch somebody's heart, that's going to touch somebody's mind, that's going to inspire somebody to do something. There is a great deal of storytelling potential in this. And if you aren't subscribed to our blog, go do that because we have a whole storytelling category on the blog that has lots of ideas um, for how to write great stories and Im improve that specific skill set as a writer. More images. So one of the common components of writing for brands like these is community. Think of every soda commercial you've ever seen. It's rarely a single person sitting alone in an apartment, right? It's groups of people on a rooftop dancing because they have soda, right? <laughs> it's taking those normal human experiences but leaning into the community component leaning into the family component. Everyday brands use um, familial language a lot. They use community imagery a lot. That's going to be a big part of the tactic here because, as Seth Godin would say, right, marketing, the best marketing, people like us do things like this, right? If you can get somebody to feel that way when they encounter something you've written, you will have done a really successful job as a marketer. Okay, so the next reference point that we like to always look at is um, in culture because it can be helpful to look at like the celebrity figures or somebody that's familiar to you that you could use to, um, to reference as you build content for a brand like this. So in culture, we like to point out people like this for the voice of Mia, which is the everyday brand voice, David Letterman, right? He's chill as heck, he's funny, he's clever, but he's very warm and relatable. Ellen DeGeneres, pretty much ticks all those same boxes. Melissa McCarthy, right? She's, she's the every woman. She's relatable, she's hilarious, she's all the things. Um, ben Stiller, right? He seems down to earth. He seems like just one of us, right? And he's able to kind of be that individual in a lot of different roles. So as you continue to expand this voice, right? So you begin with the idea of what do we all experience every day? paying attention, becoming hyper-observational as you watch the world roll, right? Sitting in a coffee shop and watching how people behave and interact and going to the gym and watching how people, not creepily, but you know, watching how people behave and interact, watching what they do on instinct, watch what they do before they realize they're doing it, right? It's that hyper-observational trait, which is, to be fair, like you won't be a good writer without developing that trait for any kind of brand, but especially for this kind of brand. Then you want to think about how you bridge we all experience this and then you lean into pain points and you lean into you know common things and then you want to bridge that into something aspirational right so the ultimate kind of 
brand narrative for a brand like this is here's the description of this common experience that we all have, right? This is how life works. This is what we all experience. Wouldn't it be great if? Wouldn't it be great if I had a faster mop so I could spend more time with my kids? Wouldn't it be great if I had an easier way to learn skills? Wouldn't it be great if I had a more flexible work arrangement? Wouldn't it be great if I had all the ingredients I needed for dinner? Thinking about how do you create the question that the brand answers. And you can use copy to do that, and and you should. That's what you should become good at. You should be good at observing, describing, setting the scene, making the question obvious, and then having the brand or a product of the brand be the answer to that question. We all experience this. Wouldn't it be great if? Another way that we kind of expand into training people on these brand voices is thinking about what it feels like. So what would it feel like to be with Mia, this brand, this everyday brand who has what you need? And we think it would feel like sitting next to the most interesting person at a dinner party. So interesting people are not interesting because they are so foreign and mysterious. They're not Sia. They're not Banksy, right? They're they're David Letterman, right? He's had an incredibly unique life. He has a background that a lot of people can relate to. He's gone through some stuff. He's very vulnerable and transparent, and yet he's very interesting. He's met a lot of interesting people. So thinking about what what really constitutes a person of interest. Um, you think about the most interesting man in the world, right? That was a big ad campaign. Um, that may not be exactly what I'm talking about here. It may be more about what is relatable, what is in my home, what is contextual, what can people relate to that makes them feel heard and seen and understood, and then that provides a very simple, very effortless solution to a real and current and consistent issue in their life. That would be an incredibly effective way to approach this kind of brand. And then lastly, I think that everyday brands really lean into what brings people joy. So yes, there is, in any marketing endeavor, you have to know pain points, you have to talk about pain points, but the idea is that people just want to be happy. Everyday brands don't need complicated, philosophical, deep marketing. They need simple, straightforward concise, to the point, pragmatic, and yet joyful marketing that people want to consume, that gets them to the finish line faster. And I think that the brands that I've chosen here that will will go through their taglines absolutely encapsulate that. Um, Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. It's sensory, it's simple, it's to the point. Hershey's, there's a smile in every Hershey bar. Again, what does everybody just wants to be happy? They just want joy. I did not mean to tie that to my name. Smart water, inspired by clouds. So we talked about aspirational, remember? So do it, bridging that, describing reality of life, <laughs> right, that we all experience, bridging it into aspirational. That's what the marketer did with that tagline, and that's very effective. H&M, long live fashion. Dove. Put your best face forward. Dove has brilliant marketing, obviously. So if you haven't looked at any Dove ad campaigns lately, set up a Google alert, get on their list, start to pay attention to what they tap into. Regardless of whether or not you agree with some of their approaches, you have to admit that they get people's attention. And then Chick-fil-A. Eat more chicken. (laughs) Chick-fil-A is like a mecca for stay-at-home moms. How did they become that way? Not because of a wildly superior product, right? They became that way because of marketing. So think about what they did. Think about how they positioned things. Think about how funny it is, how unique it is, the story it tells, and the way that it inspires people to um, think about the possibilities of how they could live their life differently. Okay. Everyday brands aren't going to rock anybody's world. They're going to ease the load. And as a writer, if you can capture that, if you can capture that dynamic of like, let me help you, and become the voice of a brand in that level in that level of a meaningful way, then you can go into higher and higher realms of proficiency in this area. It's a great brand voice to master. It's a great one to practice. It's built on your ability to observe human behavior and your ability to kind of think through the shared experiences we all have, describe them well, 
and then bridge those gaps into how you provide or your company or a company provides meaningful solutions. I really wish you all the best with this one. I think it's a tricky one to get right and it takes some time. You've really, really got to put in some hours of practicing, writing, thinking through what, what the voice sounds like, getting more authentic, shaving, 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 ruthlessly editing yourself so it's not flower, flowery or excessive. It's really sweet and short and to the point. Lots of good editing to be done. I would love to um, hear how it goes. So if you, if you tried this brand voice, I'll absolutely drop a comment. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, subscribe to our blog, and there are other videos in this series that will teach you about other brand voices, which can also be fun to explore. Good luck.